there, it's Christy with the Chirp YouTube channel. I want to talk to you today about phthalates. Hard word to spell, hard word to say, and they are terrible, terrible chemicals that are damaging us and our environment. And I'm here to tell you today what they are, why you should stay away from them, and how you can stay away from them better. We cannot avoid all exposure to phthalates because they are ubiquitous. They are everywhere. They are in almost everything. They are probably in every cell of our body by now. However, there are some things we can do to limit our exposure and there are some things we can do to possibly speed up our metabolism of the phthalates so that we get rid of them sooner. The reason this topic is before you today is because I recently read a new study that showed that women who were exposed to twice the number of certain chemicals during pregnancy had children who were 25 to 40 percent more likely to be language delayed. Language delay is not a good thing. Language delay can also be a precursor to other delays, or it can be a clue that there are also other delays which have yet to be diagnosed. This is a bad thing. I haven't read a study like this before. We do know that phthalates do a lot of bad things in the human body. Let me tell you about some of them. Phthalates are associated with metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome means there are abnormalities in blood sugar regulation, cholesterol, and weight that all work together to make you less healthy. Phthalates also are associated with smaller penis size in male babies. This is a bad thing. We want our hormone levels to be what they should be. We don't want them to be disrupted by these chemicals. Phthalates are associated with erectile dysfunction. Phthalates are associated with more hot flashes in women. If you have heard of the phrase endocrine disrupting chemicals, phthalates fall into that category. Phthalates disrupt our endocrine system. Our hormones don't work as well when they are in the presence of phthalates. That's a bad thing. Hormones are very, very important for our bodies to function well, for us to be healthy, and for us to be able to reproduce. Phthalates are a class of chemical that is typically used in plastics, nail products, vinyl, certain floor coverings like carpet, fabrics, skin care products, hair care products, all sorts of things that we spend a lot of time with and that we put on our bodies or we put in an area where we could actually ingest them. I did not know this, but the terrible chemicals that are in traditional nail polishes actually sink in through the nail bed into the bloodstream and can be measured in the bloodstream of women who use nail polishes, traditional nail polishes. This makes me wonder. I used to paint my nails all the time when I was in a very vulnerable preteen era age range. And I wonder if maybe that contributed to some of the difficulties that I've had health wise. We can never know these things. And obviously our world is so messed up that we can't avoid all of the poisons. However, I like to be very cautious now. The first way that I recommend that you work to avoid phthalates is by limiting the amount of plastic that you use in your everyday life. Obviously plastic is everywhere and there's not a whole lot that we can do about that, but we can start purchasing things that are not made of plastic on purpose. We can be very purposeful about how we purchase our food, how we purchase our drinks, how we purchase water. Try to purchase things that come in glass or cardboard or try to dispense with packaging altogether when it comes to your food. That would be great. 
Another thing you can do to limit your phthalate exposure is by carefully vetting your personal care products and those that you might use on your children. Go to the Environmental Working Group's Skin Deep database. I will put a link to it in the notes down below this video and check out the products that you want to purchase. I have totally shifted over to products that are in the green zone when it comes to safety because I've had a lot of health problems and many of them had to do with hormone dysregulation in various ways. So I definitely wanted to be cautious about this. Check out the products you want to use and slowly transition over to products that are safer, that don't have as many toxic chemicals or perhaps products that don't have any toxic chemicals at all because we can definitely use products that don't contain toxic chemicals. We don't need those chemicals for our skin to look great. We don't need those chemicals for our skin to be smooth, to work on anti-aging or anti-acne or whatever we wanna do. We don't need those chemicals. There are also safer versions that don't have phthalates in them of nail polishes. So if you love to paint your nails, please get a better version of nail polish. Especially you wanna think about things that you're going to ingest. And in fact, everything we put on our body gets into our bloodstream. So you want it to be very clean. But there are certain things that we ingest faster and that's anything that is going to be on our lips or in the food that we eat. There have been studies that showed that fast food restaurants have a lot more phthalates in the food, which is surprising. I don't know how that works. I'm assuming because artificial colors and flavors don't have to be identified and fragrance can have phthalates in it without telling us. The only way we can know for sure is if a product is labeled that it doesn't have phthalates. And even then, who knows, they might not be telling us the truth. Stick with whole plant foods whenever possible and cook at home as much as possible and that will limit your exposure. This is another reason why I talk about plant-based eating or vegan eating a lot on this channel. It helps with a variety of things, but also plant foods have a lot fewer phthalates in them than do animal products like meat, dairy, cheese, those kind of things. And also do your best to avoid anything that has a synthetic fragrance or synthetic colors in it. Those things are notoriously bad. Check the plastic stamp on your plastic items that says what kind of plastic it is. The kinds that are best known for having phthalates are the ones that are labeled with a three or a seven. For your children, choose toys that are made after 2008 when phthalates in toys were banned. Drink and eat from ceramic, glass, or stainless steel rather than from plastic. Choosing organic food also seems to help. You might also choose to purchase and use a whole house water system that is labeled to remove phthalates from the water. We have some suspicion that phthalates can be excreted faster from your body if you sweat more. So get out there and run or ride your bike or play tennis or play kickball with your kids. Whatever you like to do, whatever you can do with your kids, do more of it. Maybe it's shoveling snow. Do that a lot. Sweat those toxins out. I can't give you the news that you can remove phthalates from your life completely, but I can tell you that you should avoid them as much as possible. You should get them out of your home if you can, as much as you can. Get them out of your children's lives as much as you can, and be cautious about what you do bring into your home because toxins are out there and they are real. I prefer not to think about them, sort of like thinking about germs. I don't do that a whole lot, but they are out there. They can make you sick and they are affecting society as a whole. They are making our lives worse. So be careful. Don't be discouraged. Don't be downhearted, but be careful. And I will see you in my next video.
Talk to you soon. Bye.